I'm doing here is I want to explain a couple of concepts from my hypothesis and then also at the end of the video I'll post some schematics. Here you see that I'm driving it direct again single wire and it looks pretty decent. It's in tune. But we have to understand that there's always a feedback through you can call it the ether, capacity, environment, space, whatever, from this generator output back to the generator through whatever medium you want to refer to it as. The thing is that this is doing a couple of different things, which is not as easy to explain as this here. And in order to explain that, first let's co cover the modulation, how that's working, and then I'll take and show you a couple other things about coupling, uh, coupling the field that's being generated in this torus into the environment, ether, vacuum, whatever you want to refer to it as. And it makes a significant difference. So here what I have is, at the very top, Number one is a normal magnet. You see the magnetic field around the magnet. I only drew two lines, top and bottom. Then we see number two, and I say no field cut. That's because I am not cutting the magnetic fields in the magnets in any way. Then we see number three, which is no addition of a magnetic, of magnetic field to the magnets. Then we see what I am doing via my hypothesis. When I hit the resonant point of the magnets, I'm causing a ripple in the fields. I'm not changing their energy. I'm merely causing it to ripple. Okay, so we get back here. And as we know in the past from a sec exciter, that if you hook something to it to improve that feedback loop, it appears to get better. So let's just put a clip lead on this little board here. And yeah, it got a little better. Oh, better yet, there's maximum. Okay, so what that has done is it has improved the coupling, not back to the generator, but coupling from here back into here via the fact that we are allowing the generator to return easier. This is really not causing this to change in what it's doing. It's merely enabling it to work by allowing the generator through the system more effectively to the generator. Now, uh, that may sound squirrely, but it's true. Okay, let's put this block of aluminum here that I've used a number of times. Tune it up. And we can see that it's not quite as effective. I mean, there's a minute little difference in that versus the test lead. So we'll get the test lead out of here, and we'll get the aluminum out of here. And then what we'll do is remember our, our Faraday box. Let's put our Faraday box up here, retune it, and you can see the significant difference with the Faraday box. Okay, so I'm going to add a couple of uh, schematics at the end to show you how extremely simple this circuit is, yet how complex it is to be able to get it to work. Uh, let's see, I don't know, the number of combinations with 360 degrees, uh, two magnets, it should come out to something like 64,000 unique positions. Ah, a little more than that. So anyway, okay, let's get the schematics on there and get this posted.